let's talk about India's perspective. We have uh, always uh, been sympathizer of uh, uh, Palestine causes, and we were one of the first countries to have uh, shown our uh, open uh, support to the uh, country and its their existence. While at the same time, we are always concerned about our relationship with Israel. I mean, we are. Uh, placed in a very, very unique position where we have good relations and we have tried to maintain good relations with both sides of it. How do you see India can play a crucial role at this juncture when the things are at, at, their, uh, at the worst, I mean, they, they are uh, touching the South Pole as far as their relationship is concerned. Can India play some role in this? I think uh, the evolution since October 7, poses some very serious challenges to Indian diplomacy. Uh, and uh, I think basically we have been up to the task. We have uh, kept a low profile. We have uh, uh, played our card reasonably well. Uh, we have expressed abomination at October 7 tragedy. Uh, and Prime Minister himself uh, was quick to talk to his Israeli counterpart uh, to express our uh, condemnation. Uh, we have also, as it, uh, the war in Gaza unfolded, we also called for peace and diplomacy uh, and uh, uh, civilian casualty being uh, avoided. The classic. Uh, we have sent some relief as well to. Palestinians in Gaza, uh, and our ties with uh, both uh, remain at, the, at a steady ebb. Uh, now, there are other factors in the play which affect us. We have 9 million Indians in the Gulf, and uh, any conflagration between Iran and Israel that uh, ignites the Gulf is going to have very serious consequences for the nine million uh, expatriates from India. Secondly, the oil prices would go up if Iran, Iran's uh, uh, oil installations are bombed by Israel, as was being talked about in last week. Uh, if the state of hormones is closed, then how do we get our oil supply? Uh, that is another matter. Nearly half of our oil imports are from the Gulf. So that, that gets protected. Third thing, we are already seeing our shipping lanes via a marble Monday affected by the sporadic actions of Houthi. Uh, who the uh, militia against maritime lanes. And these are, these are vital for India. And uh, circumnavigating uh, around Cape of Good Hope is not a good solution in the long run. So that also affects us. Uh, there are other issues involved, including uh, uh, the welfare of Indians in Iran. There are nearly 30,000 Indians in Iran, 10,000 of them seminary students. They may become victim of uh, any collateral damages if affected by the war, uh, if it expands to Iran and Israel. Uh, there, are 10, there are nearly 10,000 Indians in Israel. Some of them have had to face uh, difficulties and repatriation had to be carried out. Uh, there are similarly Indians in uh, uh, Lebanon as well. Uh, so all that comes in. And uh, I think at a different level, the inconsequentiality of the international Organizations such as UN Security Council, Nagawa, and uh, Red Cross, WHO, etc., shows that Indian criticism about this 
uh, these uh, bodies being frozen since Second World War with regard to uh, the developments in the uh, in the world subsequent to that uh, 75 years uh, need to be taken on board and the, the reforms of the international body need to be carried out. Israel is a source for plenty of trade activities with India, plenty of defense uh, technology imports. And if uh, uh, Israel, for example, uh, is not able to uh, supply us the defense hardware or technology because it has its own priorities for the war, if Israeli diamonds cannot be polished in India, all these issues would, uh, would uh, pose challenges, but would also offer opportunities. So we need to leverage them uh, suitably. And I think this is happening to some extent. I think uh, three things which uh, to me emerges out of this. Uh, one is our energy security and you are a great expert and you have done some special studies on energy security. Uh, I would like to have your views on energy security one, our expat exposure. We are probably one of the largest uh, contributor to the expatriates in the Gulf region. And the third is like uh, defense technology. On the, on the trilogy of these three things, how do you think that India should be giving a uh, more uh, explicit uh, uh, expression to its uh, kind of friends and allies, or it should continue with its kid glove approach that it has been adopting or it has been having uh, so far, uh, looking at the vulnerability and fragility of the issues? I think uh, much of what is happening is uh, uh, a new of the international uh, pressures. It has the local uh, impetuses, and the local impetuses are often beyond anyone's control. Uh, even, domain, even within that region, much to say of outside the region. Uh, the suspended animation that is currently in place uh, uh, is waiting for uh, the, the, the Second shoe to fall, as they say in Arabic, if the the uh, if the hostile atmosphere is contained and reversed, then things are going to be better off. There are going to be opportunities for reconstruction. There are going to be opportunities for humanitarian work, and there are going to be opportunities for institution building in Palestine, in Lebanon, all these areas where India can uh, be a, uh, a legitimate and credible part. When it comes to protecting our 9 million expatriates in the Gulf, which remitted nearly half of their total amount of $125 billion to India that we received last year. Uh, we need to engage in connecting with them, reassuring them that India has the capability to look after their interests. And if push comes to show, their welfare will be ensure that through repatriation or through uh, means. Uh, thirdly, about energy security, I think it's a it's a very important issue. We are the world's third largest importer and consumer of grid. And uh, our economy needs 85% of its crude requirement net from outside. It is the largest drain on our import basket, nearly one third to one third, depending on the oil price uh, of our outflow of foreign exchange 
goes on importing oil and gas and coal. Uh, all that is makes us very vulnerable. And uh, uh, various methods have been tried from uh, ethanol blending to LNG, CNG, and uh, uh, popularization of uh, mass transport such as metros. Uh, but India's oil consumption is still rising at twice or twice the global rate. During the last 10 years, every year on average, India's oil consumption has risen by 4%, while the global uh, consumption has been rising at around 1.3%. So we, we are sitting depths. In fact, after China and the United States, we are the third largest importer and consumer. While United States has managed to become a self-reliant country as far as oil and gas is concerned, in fact, they are exporting gas thanks to tail revolution. China's oil consumption has been rising, but imports have been falling. Uh, in fact, for past four months till September, the imports have fallen by 2.5%. So the conventional wisdom among the oil, global oil circulates that between now and 2040, India would be the largest driver of global oil demand growth, which is a frightening concept. We uh, already are breaking at teams, trying to contain our pollution levels, trying to contain global warming, and trying to contain the maddening rush on the on our streets, particularly in metropolitan towns. We cannot afford to uh, let the situation continue. We need to uh, diversify the transportation fuel resources. And uh, that is where a lot of work is being done. Electrical vehicles, uh, use of LNG, liquefied nitrogen gas for uh, truck colleges, uh, new ideas where Business funds, salaries in various parts of the world. And we need to work on this in a mission mode manner. Uh, I think if we are to uh, undertake these, we would reduce our vulnerability, oil exploration, gas exploration, and tying up uh, acreages in non sensitive, non geopolitically well-known areas such as Mozambique, such as Guyana, Brazil, elsewhere would also help to diversify and reduce the impact of the Gulf. Eventually, as I already said, the oil prices are bound to go down. As most observers predict, oversupply in 2020 uh, by a million to uh, one and a half million barrels per day. As it is, OPEC plus has five million barrels per capacity. So even if a limited war between Iran and Israel takes place, oil is unlikely to be greatly affected. But ten to fifteen dollars a barrel of price hike would be very uh, disturbing for the economy. Remember, when the oil prices go up by a dollar, India's foreign outflow grows by between two thousand and three thousand crores per year. That's good. So, 
very scary comparison. <laughs> this brain is something that we need to work to avoid, but the instruments at our disposal are fairly limited in the geopolitical. All right, uh, uh, towards the end, I would like to ask one more question. Uh, thank you for uh, such a detailed uh, explanation about the energy that uh, makes me believe that we would have the next discussion with you on energy, which is the issue of the world today because it touches on environment, touches on society, touches on development, touches on everything that we are interacting with. But for now, I would like to have uh, 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 your views on in terms of points that we should be looking forward to as a student uh, who are preparing for civil service examination what aspects of the diplomatic evolution that we should be looking forward to while this uh, israel conflict is uh, uh, going on i think it reinforces the importance of uh, expertise in diplomacy uh but say First of all, it, uh, uh, India's uh, foreign service needs to be strengthened. And I would uh, recommend that uh, uh, the candidates uh, do not go by the conventional wisdom and uh, uh, get a sense from their heart whether they find Indian foreign service to be a more uh, credible career opportunity uh, where they can play a more uh, defining role in protecting and promoting India's interest abroad. Secondly, I think we need to avoid hyperventilation. Uh, very often, uh, media, particularly social media, tends to see things through uh, their own domestic prisons. Uh, Israel Arab conflict is often seen through religious prisons, uh, which is uh, a wrong way of looking at it. A national prison should be more important. It is not our war, it is not a jihad, it is not a crusade, it is something happening in an important area where we have to look for protection of our interests and promotion of our interests later. So uh, thirdly, in this mayhem where human values are uh, often given a buy, uh, a humanitarian approach to diplomacy would uh, would be an important uh, input that India can make. India has been a humanitarian country. We have managed to live together in a diversified platform with multiple religions, uh, ethnicities, languages, and so on. And uh, our role model should be something that we should be proud of and be able to project. Uh, we, uh, I think, also need to work with regard to uh, the, the possibility of day after. Once Gaza war ends, for example, this, the, the area would have to be reconstructed institutions have to be built, new society would have to be created which does not allow abominations like Hamas with this uh, toxic ideology for destroying state of Israel to be uh, revived. So how are we, what institutions are we going to create? How are we going to go back? India does have a contribution to make. It will be more than $200 billion worth of construction to this. As city, as the area, we need to be planned all over the 
similar uh, depending on how the war turns out if Hezbollah similar is in Mountain to be chatting to Lebanon, which is a different society where much of the political process is frozen along the sectarian line, which have clearly uh, not executed themselves well in the new reality. Uh, this, this country is broken, it will have no president for two years. It's a caretaker prime minister, economy is in a mess, and uh, now we have a war. So they need, they need our support and opportunities. Okay. But what is normally done is to hold an international aid conference, Gaza, for example, or uh, Lebanon, for example, where various donors, quote unquote, make donations, pledges, but these pledges are often in form of kind and not in cash. So their companies get the toehold into the system and they make money. So we should do, uh, we should uh, think of day after and our diplomacy should be up for that. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving such a detailed uh, exploration. I think uh, touching upon issues of technology to energy to humanitarian to diplomatic and geographical and historical, all perspectives that you have uh, explained. And I really cannot thank you enough on my behalf and Casey's behalf on behalf of so many hundreds and thousands of students who are going to be benefited by the factual narration that you have uh, given on the issue. Thank you very much and uh, it is always a pleasure talking to you and getting a lot of insights uh, which I, I could have never thought uh, personally. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.